Chapter 5, Mishnah 4. The Mishnah returns to its description of the procedure for capital crimes. After this, i.e. after the judges questioned the first witness, as described in Mishnah 1, they bring in the second witness and they examine him with the same questions. If the statements of the two witnesses are found to be consistent, and thus their testimony is accepted, the judges open the case with a statement of acquittal. That is, they tell the defendant that if he is innocent, he has nothing to fear, because he will be acquitted. The Mishnah teaches who may make arguments in favor of the defendant and who may make arguments against him. If one of the witnesses said, I have a reason to acquit him, or if one of the students who sit before the judges said, I have a reason to convict him, the court silences him. A witness may not join the discussion at all, either on the side of the acquittal or the side of conviction, and a student may argue only for acquittal, not for conviction. The Mishnah relates what happens when a student argues for acquittal. If one of the students said, I have a reason to acquit him, the judges bring him up and seat him among themselves so that he can present his argument to them. And once the student is seated among the judges, he does not go down from there the entire day. If there is something to his words, i.e. his argument seems to be sound, the judges listen to him and discuss what he has to say. Moreover, the defendant himself can argue for his own acquittal. Even if the defendant says, I have reason for my acquittal, they listen to him, but only if there is something to his words.